the second-year Texans, did they slump or did they succeed? We're talking about the sophomores coming up right now. What's the motherfucking deal, Sauce Nation? It's your boy, Ed Honcho. You know, your Houston homeboy, your Houston homer. Uh, senior Sauce, you have you get down. This is Sauce Sports. If you're not familiar with Sauce Sports, it's a Houston, Texas homer channel. So if you want the freshest flavor in Houston sports every day, fresh takes, live streams every night, man, you need to hit that subscribe button, become a fresh ingredient, and in getting a part of this flavor. So today we're going to be talking about the Texans second-year players, sophomores, if you will. We're going to talk about if they had a slump or if they managed to succeed. And I'm sure a lot of you know, but I want to know your opinion so make sure as we talk about these guys you hit that comment section below because that's what makes you a fresh fucking ingredient hey man let's just get in it to win it so we're going to start off with the undrafted guys from last year we're going to work our way all the way up to the top so the first guy we're going to talk about is Wendell Williams a receiver speedy guy a room to have ran a 419 uh explosive type guy 2016, he only had, he only played three games, had four receptions for a total of 75 yards. 2017 was looking good, uh, but was let go late in the preseason after getting a receive, having a <clears throat> broken collarbone. So they let him go with an injury settlement. I want to say late in December, he did have a tryout with the Jets. I don't know if that formed in anything, but Wendell Williams is a very interesting guy. Uh, speed, uh, you know, you can't coach speed. It'd be interesting to see. What the Texans may consider if they may consider bringing him back in the near future. If Brian Gain has mentioned getting explosive players, and that's a guy that can definitely stretch the field. Very explosive. Speed is unmatched. So the next guy we're going to talk about is Brennan Scarlett, an undrafted linebacker out of Stanford. In 2016, I want to say he played seven games, had a total of 13 tackles. Uh, backdoored in 2017, played 11 games, had 29 tackles and two sacks. And the game that he was actually starting to, to, to it seemed like he was starting to find his legs, find out, you know, that he could play a little bit, he ended up getting injured. Another one of those defensive depth casualties that we had. I mean, we took a, a significant amount of injuries last year. Uh, just unfortunate. But hopefully this is a guy that they'll bring back uh, because he's shown some flashes, shown that he can, you know, rush the passer and, and do some other things. Like I say, be a great backup to have or maybe work himself into a starting role and really be a contributor you know, alongside some of these other younger guys that we have. So to round out the undrafted, let's talk about my favorite undrafted guy, Steven Anderson, a tight end. Um, probably one of the more resilient tight ends that we had because, you know, CJ went down, Griffin went down, uh, played 15 games for us this year. Last year had a total of 13 games. Once well, so he had 13 games, had 11 receptions for a total of 93 yards and a touchdown and accounted for six first downs. This year played 15 games, 25 receptions for a total of 342 yards, made some of the most amazing catches out of all of the pass catchers that we have on the Texas. Had some, some crucial catches that definitely uh, solidified games for us, well, the couple of games that we had, but definitely made some great plays. Um, I had 342 yards this year and one touchdown accounted for 17 first downs. Steven Anderson is a guy that I'd like to see utilized a little bit more, uh, more dynamic. Pass blocking is all right. Can, you know, can improve in that a little bit, but you know, we don't necessarily need to worry about that too much. I think with the return of Deshaun, the connection with Anderson, CJ's injuries, uh, head injuries, you know, the concussion situation, and Griffin kind of along that same track. It's going to be very interesting to see how the Texans utilize Anderson. I definitely would like to see him get a larger role. But let's get on to some of the guys who have been drafted, and let's see how they fared, <laughs> they fared this year. So let's start talking about the first of the drafted sophomores. We're talking about DJ Reader, another guy from that Clemson connection that the Texans just love so much. And, hey, I ain't mad at it, Jack. I like it too. Uh, DJ Reader, fifth-round guy, <clears throat> 2016 uh, as a rookie, played all 16 games, actually started seven, had one sack and 22 tackles. That's solid. Um, that's solid. I mean, it's okay. But we can talk about 2017. He did step it up a notch. Uh, played 14 games, so it was a little bit short on the games. He actually suffered an injury, but he started all those games. Had 47 tackles and a sack. And with a lot of the defense around him going down, you know, he still did a significant job. And I'm only looking forward to seeing what he's going to do next year. A guy that I'm very interested in. He was helping out at the Senior Bowl, you know, going the extra mile. So I think that, to me, shows a good work ethic. Then I think that he's going to be a very interesting Texan to watch in the near future. So, continuing in the fifth round, let's talk about a guy who was supposed to fill a position of need, especially to have some youth and some talent. Uh, K.J. Dillon played a total of five games last year with the Texans as a rookie, had a total of four tackles. Uh, not very good. And then this year, only to end up on IR and then get waived September 2nd. In December, he eventually uh, ended up on the Arizona Cardinals practice squad. Hey, I'm rooting for him, hoping that he'll have a good career. So hopefully that he can bounce back and make it. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be with the Texans, as I wish it was. But we'll have to be looking in another direction for that or stick with what we got. 
All right, so let's get into that fourth round, man. We're talking about an interesting guy to San Jose State. We're talking about running back Tyler Irvin. In 2016, didn't have the greatest year. Used more as a return guy. Averaged like less than 10 yards of return. So that wasn't that great. We're not going to necessarily get into the, the special team stats. But as a running back, I want to say last year he had one rush for three yards. Had three receptions for a total of 18 yards. 2017 comes back as a sophomore looking completely different. People are talking about him. He's running hard, running with authority, and rocking that number 34, which is a very important number in the city of Houston. I mean, it's big shoes to fill uh, when you rock that jersey. I mean, even if it's we're not talking about the Texas, if we're talking about the Rockets, or, you know, we're talking about history, whatever it may be. But uh, 2017, he only played four games, got cut short due to injury, um, <clears throat> had four carries for, I want to say, 12 yards, had eight receptions for a total of 38 yards, which – doesn't jump off at the page at you, but in the number of games that he did, like I say, four games as opposed to the 12 games and numbers he put up last year, it's a bit of an improvement. No telling what would have happened with some of the other injuries that went down and, you know, maybe find his position because they tried to use him as an X-factor type guy. But hopefully he comes back next year. It's a guy that a lot of people have not been talking about. But I expect him to come back strong next year and definitely make a splash and, and compete for a spot on that roster. So let's slide into that dirty third, third round. Let's talk about Braxton Miller. Converted QB to receiver. Um, Miller, last year as a rookie, I want to say started six games, played 10 total, had, uh, I want to say, 15 receptions for 99 yards, one touchdown. This year, played one more game, but actually started three less, had a couple of healthy scratches, and that's a little concerning, but I think he started to find his light towards the end. Uh, I want to say he got dinged up a little bit at the towards the end, but I think Wes Welker, having a presence with him, helped him out a lot. Had 15... I'm sorry, 19 receptions for 162 yards and one touchdown this year. But he was starting to find his light. I want to say he got injured. What game was that he got injured? He had about 70 yards in that one game, and he was actually looking real good. It slips my mind right now. But Mac Braxton Miller is a guy that we're definitely going to have to keep our eye on. Could go either way. It's, it's just going to be up to him and what he really wants to get out of this. But I believe in him, and I'm hoping that he will be a contributor to the Houston Texans in the upcoming year. So let's talk about the second round pick, Nick Martin, brother of uh, Zach Martin up there in uh, up, up Highway 45 in old Dallas. But let's talk about Nick Martin, man. Uh, missed the entire 2016 rookie season with an ankle injury. Played 14 games in 2017. Was probably the most consistent lineman that we had. Him and uh, Manx are definitely some fan favorites of as everybody else was pretty much ass. Um, <clears throat> but end of the season – with getting surgery on the other ankle. And it's a bit of a concern because you have both ankles that are banged up. This is your center. But he should be back in time for the next season. So we'll see what happens. Like I say, I'm not worried about him being able to play at this level. Uh, it's just those injuries are definitely something you want to think about. But Nick Martin, definitely one of the more consistent guys on the team. So let's get to that first round pick. All right, let's talk about the number one. Super sophomore. No, I'm just joking. We're talking about Will Fuller. That was the number one pick out of Notre Dame wide receiver. Uh, last year, Will Fuller played 14 games, started 13. Uh, I want to say he had a total of 47 receptions for 635 yards and two touchdowns, which is which is solid. You know, you can't you can't complain about those numbers. You'd like them to be a little bit better, but especially what we were playing with last year, who was behind the center, no complaints. This year, Will Fuller suffered some injuries, and it's very unfortunate. He caught it uh, early in the season with the broken collarbone, then had some broken ribs later after he got set up by Savage. But we're not going to get into that. Uh, but you saw how his play was with Deshaun Watson. Now, the stat line, like, you know, the numbers dropped, the touchdowns multiplied, went from two to seven. He only had, I want to say, 28 receptions this year, only played in 10 games and only amassed 423 yards. Now, considering the number of games he played, still you'd like to see those numbers look a little bit better, but the seven touchdowns is what stands out because he was catching a touchdown every other pass with Deshaun Watson, so no telling what kind of numbers he will be able to put up next year. So he's definitely going to be an asset. Um, just unfortunate that, you know, the injuries took their toll on. So now if you didn't made it this far and you ain't hit that subscribe button, you're not a fresh ingredient, shame on you, man. Hit that button because you know you loving this flavor. You loving this sauce. This is Sauce Sports where we're talking all sports but only Houston. So – if you're not a member, if you're not a fresh ingredient, man, what, what are you waiting on? You know, and uh, like I said, we're putting a lot of content out. Make sure you hit the description box below. You can find links to the softsports.com or the website. You can check out the podcast, dropping daily flavor on iTunes, Google Play, and a, a variety of platforms. So I need to know how you feel. It's not that I want to know how you feel because the sauce isn't fresh without fresh ingredients, without your thoughts, without your opinion. So I need to know how you feel. Hit that comment section below, and I'm going to let you know. It's your boy, Ed Hot Show. Y'all stay saucy. I'm out. I appreciate you checking out the flavor.
Hey, Jack, man, make sure you become a fresh ingredient and hit that subscribe button. If you didn't already done that, you're like, Honcho, man, I'm way ahead of you. Make sure you caught all the flavor that you may have missed down in the corner below. Catch some of that fresh sauce. And if you have not, if you just if you just feel like you need more than just the YouTube flavor, if you need if you need more sauce, if you need that in-depth sauce, then make sure you hit the SauceSports.com website. Link right there below. No excuses. Now you know about it. It's your boy Ed Honcho. Y'all stay saucy.